Hey, board gamers, BJ from Board Game Gumbo here, back with another episode of Gumbo Live. Gumbo Live, the number one-ish Facebook Live talk show dedicated to board gaming. Our special guests tonight, Daryl Chow and Josh Capel. We're going to be talking about a game out on Kickstarter right now in too deep. It's already funded, but we're going to get some inside scoop from them tonight. Board Game Gumbo, a proud member of Punchboard Media. Hey, check out some of our other fine members like the Cardboard Horde. It's a blog written by Eric Buscemi, a native New Yorker. Steve, you know where that is. That music the ability of bits of cardboard to transform your tabletop into a near infinite number of unique gaming experiences. That's Punchboard Media, where we all bring something to the table. Hey, hit us up on social media tonight, on Twitter or on Facebook, at Board Game Gumbo, and we'll be looking for your questions in the chat group. But let's get right to our special guest. We've got Daryl and Josh. Welcome to the show. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, hello. Hi, I guess hello. you me. There he is. Josh. No, we got <laughs> hello from Singapore. Welcome to the show. Yeah, Daryl calling all the way from Singapore. It's tomorrow. I got a quick question, Daryl. Yeah. Do you know if the Islanders won tonight or not? I'm not sure, yeah. <laughs> Steve, we're not sure. You're just going to have to wait yeah. it out. Even though he's in the future, we don't know yet. Josh, can you hear us? Josh, you good? Can you hear us? Hey, Daryl, I don't think we have Josh yet. <laughs> Hold on. Well, you, you have his face at least. Yeah, you and I are going to chat until we can get him. Uh, hopefully, Josh will give us a signal. Hey, uh, Steve, send him something in the in the private chat to let him know that to, to give me a signal whenever he's coming back in. Or he can check in and check back out. Daryl, you called in from yeah. Singapore. People may not know you. I didn't realize there's so many games that you designed that I'm either it's on my list or something I want to play. So give us the quick elevator pitch. Who is Daryl? Okay. Yes. Uh, I mean, I can just show you the, some of the games on this wall here. So, <clears throat> hey, Josh, we, can you oh. hear us? Yeah, we have lost Josh's audio, and I don't know why. Josh, can you hear us? Ooh. Yeah. So, Steve, tell, oh. tell Josh to uh, click and click back on. All right, Daryl. <laughs> um, so, these are like the, the first few games that I made uh, Artemis Project, uh, Overbooked. Um, <clears throat> Mooncake Master. I have my own <clears throat> publishing company now, so all of the games from there are by me. <clears throat> so origame.co. Um, um, we plan to have about six games out <clears throat> um, by the end of this year. Yeah, I mean, that's basically my 15-second pitch. Sure. Origame, Ori game, right? <clears throat> yep. And, and that is a Singapore-based publisher, and you're you're going to be publishing just Singapore designs, or are you going to be publishing uh, designers from all over the world? Um, currently, it's just my, actually just my designs. <clears throat> um, but yeah, like maybe when we get big, I'm going to incorporate um, a whole bunch of like different Asian designs. We got a few people checking in from the chat crew. We got Patrick Newman down there. Hey, Patrick, we dodged a bullet. Everybody over here in the Gulf Coast, it went to the east of us. So hopefully you are doing okay. And of course, Alex and uh, Steve are going to be distracting us with hockey talk all night. <laughs> hey, our thoughts and prayers out to Berlin and the, rest of the people up in the Pac Northwest. Daryl, I don't know if you know what's going on over here in America. We've got these wildfires just going on. Yeah, out yeah, yeah. The Northwest. So, Berla out there in the Pacific Northwest, you know we got your back and we're thinking about you out there. So, Josh, can you hear us now? Yes, everything yeah. is cool. Okay. Yeah, right. it's been a harrowing hour. <laughs> well, it's funny. We've had some tech problems, but we're getting through them. So Daryl gave us his quick elevator pitch. Josh, give us the elevator pitch. Who is Josh Capel? Tell us about your publishing company. Um, let's see. Uh, Josh Capel is a uh, is me, and right. I am a uh, game designer oh. and, and game artist. I've been working in the <clears throat> industry for getting close to 20 years now providing art and graphic design for various uh, companies and their board games. And um, a few years ago, my wife started up a game company called KTBG, Kids Table Board Games, and we started making family games uh, with that company. And then eventually we opened up a second company called Burnt Island Games, where we make um, adult strategy games for games that won't fit into the, the family line. One of the gumbo favorites, Endeavor. You guys did a fantastic job with Endeavor. We played the heck out of that thing. I can't wait till this thing is over so I could play it some more. 
Thank you. Thank I, you I, so much. I actually bought my own copy, even though somebody else in the gumbo owns one. I was like, nope, oh, really? I got to have my own copy. Got it for, from Anubis Game and Hobby right there. So. Ah, that's great. I mean, we, we were big fans of the original release of Endeavor, like super, super huge fans. We've played it hundreds of times, literally. And Helena really pursued that game when it became available to, to yeah. make it. Ours. That was awesome. Hey, Patrick's got a question for you, Daryl. Do you live in Singapore currently? Yes. Um, last time when I mean I, I lived in Canada for 15 years, and that's that's how I know Josh. <clears throat> but yeah, I've been living in Singapore for the last three years now, <clears throat> and I, I I mean I was born here as well, so I, I grew up here till I was about 18. <clears throat> I've got my guests here, Josh Capel and Daryl Chow. We're talking about some spicy hot games that we've all played recently. And one of those games that I want to hear about, it's actually, if uh, I'm trying to remember who designed it. Is it. It's you and Sashi. Is that right, Daryl Chow? We're talking about Remember yeah. Our Trip. Yeah, this one, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So tell us about Remember Our Trip. Uh, Sue Shelton from the Dice Tower loves this game. And Eric Yoko from Punch Port Media is supposed to be reviewing it. I'm anxious to hear about it. Okay, so um, I think everyone's going to be able to get their hands on it soon because um, <clears throat> DLP just um, announced that they're going to be um, publishing it, I think, at the end of this year. <clears throat> um, the theme is quite unique. It's about <clears throat> remembering, but it's, but it's no memory involved. It's basically about recreating a map of where the, the, the friends or the players have visited in the past. So it's kind of like, I mean, if you look at it in a different way, it's kind of like a city building game, but you're, you're building the city in your memory. <clears throat> and I think the coolest thing about the game is that <clears throat> there is a, <clears throat> there is a shared board that you're recreating, but it, there you have player boards as well. <clears throat> okay. So you're, you're, you're getting points on your own player board, <clears throat> but Together with other players, you're creating um, a shared board, and then that shared board gets populated with all the tiles and, and kind of like building the city together. Oh, is um, it, if, you, if you like special yeah. games, sorry, so is it competitive or cooperative? Um, actually, almost like into deep, there are co-op and there are competitive elements, but oh. it's, it's a pure, it's a pure co competitive game. But there are parts of the game where you may want to kind of work together with other players to <clears throat> to lock in parts of the board so you can maximize your points. You, you told the story in another show about your first time actually meeting, meeting Sasha. So tell us that story. How was that meeting Sasha? How did that happen? <clears throat> okay, so we were both at um, Tokyo Game Market, and I, I was going to go up to him and tell him <clears throat> what a big fan I was of his games because um, – um, in Singapore, I have, a, I have a friend who is a big fan of Sashi, <clears throat> and so basically, I, I, I was, I mean, I was really excited to tell him like I'm a big fan. But <clears throat> so, but before I could actually tell him that, he actually actually came up. He actually said, um, "Are you Daryl? And did you design Overbooked?" <clears throat> and and then that kind of really just blew me away. Um, that, and so. Yeah, and so we—I mean, we got off on a uh, on a really good start, <clears throat> um, and then we ended ended up uh, designing a game together. So was uh, last... remember your idea, his idea, or was it one of these things that you just collaborated on? I mean, if, if you know both games, you actually know that. Okay, so you see this like uh, this spatial aspect yes. that's from Overbook, <clears throat> and then the um, the kind of like the interaction aspect that's from. Uh, let's make a bus route. Okay, uh, so a little bit of both, then, right? Yeah, yeah. So it, it's 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 a really cool kind of like hybrid of both games. <clears throat> Got a couple of questions from the chat crew, or, or just some comments. Nick, our buddy Nick says, "I miss the coffee and kaya toast from breakfast in Singapore." Is that familiar? Some kind of kaya yeah. toast. Uh, by the way, if you want to recreate your coffee experience, uh, this is one of our latest games as well. So this is about Singaporean coffee culture. <clears throat> yeah. Well, there it is, Nick, right there, Coffee King. <laughs> we King know that lots of people miss the coffee in Singapore, so we kind of made, made this game. <clears throat> hey, we are big coffee drinkers in Louisiana, so that's <laughs> what's notable. What's notable about the coffee in Singapore? <laughs> um, 
there's a very kind of gamish element about this, like the, the coffee in Singapore. So like <clears throat> in this game, there are actually like the, the order cards that you can make for this game. There's like, there's like 30 or 40 orders, uh -huh. uh, all these different coffee, like different types of coffee. <clears throat> it's a, it's a, and then you see all the ingredients are, are different as well. Uh, mm -hmm. All the names. <clears throat> um, is is the coffee I, I, I culture very it, competitive? I, I, sorry, is it very competitive between all the baristas that are trying to make the best coffee? Send me some games. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> Let's do an exchange. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, um, yeah. Like um, we, we've actually managed to get these games into like miniature market recently. So, <clears throat> so I think like you guys can get free shipping now if you. Oh, right here in the States, Minnesota Market in St. Louis. Patrick Newman says, I love yep. Tiger Bomb Gardens and the Cricket Club when Very I visit. Cool. Did we lose our host? Does that sound familiar? Yeah. I mean, Singapore is pretty small. So, like, wherever you, you mention, I, I, yeah. I, I've probably been there like 20 times. You've been to all of them. Um, hey. I mean, yeah, the Cricket Club, actually, um, my sister is a member. So, so I, I've been there before. And, and <clears throat> And uh, Tiger Bomb Gardens is is now free for entry. Oh. Um, it used to be one of the. <clears throat> it's really cool because it's like a theme park based around um, uh, Chinese mythology, which is I, I'm not sure if there's anything like that in the world. <clears throat> and then like the, there's a ride that you can actually go down in, into a dragon, and then like you you experience all the I think the eight levels of hell. <clears throat> um, so Nick says I'm the in coffee the level of hell with this technology here. <laughs> it is, Josh. The, Nick says the coffee is super rich and thick. Can you hear me, Daryl? Yeah, like I can hear you, Josh. Rich. It's like yeah, can we can hear you, Josh. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, we can think, hear you, Josh. I think I think you can't hear us again. Yeah, I think we keep losing. Them. I don't know if his iPhone's going to work, but he says think chicory coffee and Nola are Turkish coffee or Cuban coffee. So the way we like it in Louisiana, so thick that when you spoon when you stir it with a spoon, the spoon stands up. That's oh, wow. how. Yeah, that's how thick we like it. So sounds like Louisiana people would like the Singapore, Singapore coffee. coffee. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, it's it's really it's really strong here. That's but I, I I mean, <clears throat> um, I mean, and the good thing is that we're close to Indonesia, so um, that's that's where we, I think a lot of the uh, coffee beans are from there. Oh yeah. <clears throat> All right. DJ Morgan, I've got my guests here, Daryl Chow and Josh. Kipper. We're talking some spicy god games we played. And Alex Goldsmith and I were talking about a game today. I didn't realize, Daryl, this was sort of your idea. Tell me about Crazy Optics from It 10 Games because we liked Tokyo Highway a lot. And I've seen the pictures of Crazy Octopus in the videos. It looks really cool. Yeah. Um, That's so, a very well-presented game. So this game has actually started from um, a concept that I, I sent over to, to Shima-san. So um, actually started from uh, an idea that I had for a flicking game. And actually in turn, you know, because Josh liked to, like to um, did a lot of these flicking games before. So um, thanks, Josh, for all of these ideas. Uh, I mean, like when I used to play Josh's flicking prototypes before. <clears throat> so, so, so yeah, the whole world is interconnected. Um, so when I sent this to um, Shima, he, he really liked the idea. <clears throat> um, but because of COVID, I wasn't able to go to Tokyo to kind of continue the development with him. So he just took the <clears throat> took it and then it kind of grew legs and arms, I guess. And then it kind of evolved into something very different. Um, it, but I mean, it, it still kind of <clears throat> maintains the, the flicking aspect. But now there's a lot of like crazy, crazy things that you can do, um, and I so, mean even now it, it still reminds me a bit of like some of uh, Josh's <clears throat> old old games where like I think the one I think Rescue Rockets. <clears throat> um, so, so I think, Daryl, what's the pitch? What are people playing in in Crazy Octopus? Because it looks to me like a smash of Crokinole and maybe Pick Up and Deliver with Survive Escape from Atlantis all mixed in together. Yeah. I, I think basically that, that that's that's it. That's how. Really? Uh, well, <laughs> Did I get it right? <laughs> you got it right. And yeah, I mean, people who like dexterity games, uh, this is definitely something to to try out. <clears throat> um, even the theme alone, I think it's quite unique. Um, and having, I mean, it, the the Iten is really 
it, I think it's famous for having all of these cool pieces, um, even yeah. for Tokyo Highway. <clears throat> um, and so uh, the quality is always going to be good. The <clears throat> their, their, their development. Um, yeah, yeah, when I'm thinking, when I'm looking at, I mean, you can almost tell an it ten game on the table. When Tokyo Highway first came out and we started playing it, those little tiny cars and the popsicle sticks, I mean, they just stood out, Daryl. And I'm seeing the same things over here with this crazy octopus game. I think I think they're really good at, um, at the color schemes. So, yes. <laughs> I mean, I feel like almost all Japanese games, you know, like they, they kind of bring out the color and simplicity um, through, through the aesthetic that they bring to almost all of the games um, across all artists and designers. <clears throat> you can see that here. It's like a beauty in the simplicity and the it's, shapes and it's colors. It's so photogenic. You don't see a big brown boring board of the Mediterranean in every single one of their games. You know, it's it's all yeah. different. And that's Crazy Octopus, the, Octopus, the super flicking game. Oh, can't wait to see that. All right. So let me get over to this next game I want to talk about. BJ from Board Game Gumbo, I've got my guests here, Daryl uh, Chow, and we sort of have Josh Capel coming back in and out. We're going to try to see if we can uh, get his iPhone camera working. But you and I both have played smartphone, but I got a chance to play smartphone update 1.1, the brand new expansion for smartphone mm. from Arcane Wonders and from Cosmodrome Games. And by the way, Daryl, Cosmodrome Games just hit, hit it out of the park. Aquatic and smartphone have been two of the best games I've played the last couple of years. But So you played smartphone, right? I think I, I played the same one as you because I, I I think is I played the most recent version. Okay. Um, well, let's go yeah, real this quick. Is, yeah, smartphone, this is the one. Yeah, yeah smartphone 1.1. It solves a couple of things that smartphone the original had. If you remember right, the the two and three player versions maybe maybe a little meh. The board it was so spread out, and you had to use those retail locations. The player interaction, which I think is where smartphone shines. It's an economic game. It's all about cell phones in the 80s and 90s and, and building up that, that uh, oh, look, there's Steve Finn. Hey, congratulations, Dr. Finn. He had a big Kickstarter. He had all four games fund, and, he, and, and it was closed out yesterday. So big, big congratulations. But uh, with Smartphone 1.1, it solves that because the backside of the board has this two, three-player route that is North America alone. So you've seen that double-sided board then where the backside is, is uh, two, for two and three players, Daryl? Yeah. I've I've actually not played that because um, we we've, we've had five players consistently, <clears throat> but but I yeah I do I, I I mean as a game designer I kind of see what they did for the balancing. The other thing that's pretty cool about it is they've added these uh, yeah exactly for balancing purposes yeah. and then they've added some new technologies and they bring in some fun things that I really like. So if you look at the one on the bottom left, that's one of the new mechanics. That's that CEO mechanic. That's the little face of Steve Jobs that you have. Everybody's got yeah. one. Wherever that CEO is, if you have the Wi-Fi technology, you're going to get a cool power. Maybe you're going to be able to sell all over the world in places you have technology where your CEO is there. Maybe at the end of your turn, you can sell one in the, in the logistics phase. And that way you're jumping ahead of other people and trying to sell in the region. But it makes that CEO, the movement of the CEO important and, and kind of forces people to go to the Wi-Fi instead of the big number six technology. The other thing I like about it is it adds those mini improvements. And we found that they were it was a cool way to balance out the game. So one of the things, Daryl, if if you start in a tough location and you don't have the great, you know, um, improvement and you keep getting locked out of the market and you're not getting them, go for that mini improvement. And now you've got the the one thing you need every round if you can get there first. So so yeah. far, so far I, our plays are just fantastic. What do you think, Daryl? Yeah, I, I I did I did notice that like the asymmetric starting locations uh, do do affect players starting out. <clears throat> so having this really is uh it's a cool addition and gives you a lot more strategies. The last thing that it adds, and this is something Daryl, that's pretty common to a lot of Euro games. So it added this: be the first person to complete this goal, and you get these bonus points. But again. That means that every time you play the game, you're staring at these five, six, or seven goals, and maybe that changes your strategy. Maybe I'm not going to go for the for the biggest money every time because there's three or four of these directives, they call it, that my opponent's going to get, and he's going to get 36 points because I've left him alone. I changed my strategy up. So all in all, two big thumbs up for smartphone. I don't want to spoil the review that's going to be coming out, but smartphone update 1.1, basically an expansion. You and I like it, right, Daryl? Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> it's a great game.
All right, we got a couple of questions out there. Alex says, hey, here's some more Singapore highlights. The airport? <laughs> the airport the highlight? Actually, yeah, the airport is probably the most famous in the world. Um, we just have, like, we have this, like, huge waterfall um, in, in the middle of the mall. I mean, if you, if you guys can Google it, it's called Changi, C-H-A-N-G-I, Jewel. We're going to check that out. Please check it out. Now, I, I got to get this right. Are you telling me there's like a, a hot dog stand or a, a hawker stand that's got Michelin ratings? Yeah. So I think Singapore is famous for having the cheapest uh, Michelin star food. Uh, you can get a plate of it. I think it's like three or four Singapore dollars, which is like two two or three US dollars. Wow. That's that's pretty cool. That could also have been someplace called Santosa Island. So Yeah. So that's kind of like – so. I mean, for people who don't know, Singapore is uh, it's a country, but it's also a city and it's an island. So the, the really the only kind of like um, tourist spots or, or, or like kind of like, um, I guess, domestic tourism we have is to like this small island <laughs> of the like the south of Singapore. Stephen's, uh, Stephen's big game we were talking about here. Patrick says, looking forward to Nanga Parbat and Mining Collins. I back N Nanga Parbat. My wife and I love to play two-player games, and Stephen, he's known, Daryl, as the king of the filler games. I haven't played Nanga Parbat. I'll tell you, I was so intrigued by the, the color scheme, by the artwork, and by mm. the gameplay I had to get that. So, all right, we're, we're, getting, we're getting a travel lessons in Singapore. This is really fun. So you're getting to brag about your country, right? Right, Daryl? Yeah, I mean, I think I do that enough in my games. Um, so. <laughs> you know, you know, so, some cool. Can I give you some kudos, Daryl? I saw yeah. an interview where you and the interviewer talked about how important your local culture is for you, not only to, not only from the gaming scene, as in, hey, let's get the gamers and the game designers, let's get our culture into the games, right? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and I love. Why, yeah, I why mean, is that important to you? That's really important because otherwise we all kind of end up kind of cycling through the same themes and um, you know like the same stories uh, when we are able to tell our histories and our culture and our stories through our games um, there's there's so many of us and it kind of like reflects our, our diversity across all cultures <clears throat> and then and we can play games as not just a really cool kind of like way to exercise your brain um, and um, in, interact with your friends, but also as a as a learning journey about other cultures. <clears throat> and I think, you know, like that kind of brings the world together and make you know like fosters understanding um, across all communities. Well, I would tell you, Dara, I was joking about the hawkers and about the food <clears throat> because here in Louisiana, in South Texas, some of the best food you've ever eaten you can get right at a gas station or right in the convenience store, <clears throat> which may, doesn't make sense that a gas station or a convenience store. Would have a you know would have good food, but you get these home cooks that are barbecuing something or smoking something or or making a making an etouffee and it's just fantastic food. I, you know, if I go to Singapore, I'm gonna be looking for those food stores. I will definitely yeah, yeah. Please, anyone who comes to Singapore, just uh, hit me up and I'll, I'll bring you on a food tour. <clears throat> awesome. Well, we lost Josh, so it's gonna be the me and Daryl show tonight. One of the games, <laughs> one of the games that Steve wanted you to mention is that Plantopia game. That oh is, yeah. You guys got a couple of days left on the Kickstarter, is that right? Yeah, yeah. We, I, I should do a quick plug since that's uh, that's something that's uh, really kind of like my main focus for the last while. <clears throat> and I think lots of people will like it. Um, it's basically, I guess the elevator pitch for this in what, like one sentence is that it's a really cute and easy to learn race for the galaxy. Oh, <clears throat> and okay. I, use, I use that pitch in my uh, story page as well. <clears throat> and I think that, that, that got a lot of people hooked. So I've got the um, pictures up there. I'm not familiar. Is this from an IP? Is this an intellectual property? Okay, so um, the IP is um, a web comic called Life of a Potato. Um, <laughs> okay. It's actually, uh, but the, the thing is, Plantopa itself um, was created as a board game, um, as a card game. <clears throat> um, but the characters that I, that you just saw, the potato and the mushroom, those ones are from the IP. <clears throat> yeah. So this uh, this potato here. So the, I mean, it's literally called Life of a Potato. So that that's the main character. Okay. Um, so in the web comic, there's like all of these um, stories. It's a very uplifting web comic um, about how like a 
small guys like Potato can change the world. Um, uh, but Plantopia is actually very different. So kind of like uh, we situated we situ situated this game as like the, uh, uh, one of um, Potato's adventures. So it's one of the planets that uh, Potato visited. And basically you're trying to grow this really crazy garden that's full of all of these uh, interactive uh, plants that kind of interact with our strategies. Um, it has a really interesting weather mechanic um, where all players will pick one card to play. Um, there's always going to be five weather cards. <clears throat> and then um, all, of, all of these five weather cards, you put them together. Okay. And then you check every plant. I mean, just like in real life, like each plant is uh, affected by the weather individually. <clears throat> and you see, and it, like it's possible that it can even grow twice if its, uh, if its condition is met multiple ah. times. <clears throat> so, yeah. so a little bit of engine building, but tied to this IP, right? Yep. Okay. And, uh, and, and it's, I think it's, it's it's a like for the price that you're getting, um, you're getting lots of game for it. And that is still on Kickstarter. Uh, got yeah, another. Five days left. Yeah, I got five days left. Let's see. I think I had a link real quick. Yeah, here it is. Steve's got the link. It's in the sh it's in the chat group. Check it out. Got some Starla level. Oh, our family plays games. Cute. I agree. I love this artwork. Yeah. This is really cool. Hey, Steve, then had a couple of questions real quick. Were there any names of other Singapore designers that he might be familiar with? Uh, the the scene is 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 not as robust as say like uh, Japan and Taiwan, um, but um, there are like since since I got back, we've been kind of fostering a game design community. So I think you're going to be seeing some uh, new new designers out uh, really soon. Uh, one designer that I that I uh, work with and really respect is called Daniel. Uh, I think he has a game out by WizKids next year. Uh, Daniel Lee. <clears throat> we'll be looking for that. How yeah. popular is that webcomic? Is that is that a big thing in Singapore or is it is a is it? A I think it's actually bigger in the US. Um, in the US. Yeah, um, and I mean that's kind of why we actually chose to do Kickstarter because if it was just in Singapore, um, and uh, we have pretty good local distribution, but we really yeah. wanted. Uh, with this this campaign to get all of our games out to um, everyone in the US. So so the, the games that I mentioned, like uh, Kopi King and uh, all of our Singapore food games, uh, you can actually get it in if you back uh, the Bonanza level. So you for can add that, add that store. It, what Was the webcomic creator involved in the project? <clears throat> yeah, and, and, and that's, that was a really cool thing to do so actually the the ip is from a local digital game studio uh and they have a whole suite of like uh um indie strategy games um it's it's called holy potatoes uh but this ip is kind of a bit separate like it's it's really kind of focused on like really making a very touching uh and meaningful web comic <clears throat> um and yeah and so I work hand in hand with the illustrator, and we came up with all of these puns. Um, it was mostly her, actually, but I, I, <laughs> I, I like to say that I contributed some to them, some, some of them. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's it's, it's been a blast uh, creating these cards. Uh, in terms of game, actually, there are a lot of like game design Easter eggs as well. I don't know if everyone can uh, like. <clears throat> so I mean, the the obvious puns are in like the flavor text, but. Some of the yeah, I tried to throw in some game design Easter eggs as well. Be be a pro tractor. Nice, nice. I like that. <laughs> okay. And I did see that when I was scrolling through the cards, there was a lot of visual puns. So I do yeah. like that. And that's Plantopia. And that's yeah. from that's from Ori Game. Yeah, right? Ori Game. And it's still on Kickstarter for another five days. Check that out, chat crew, because you still got a chance. And you can back inside the Kickstarter, you can uh, have access to some of the other games. Yep. BJ. BJ from Morgan Gumbo, I've got my guests here, Josh and Daryl. I think I have Josh. Yes, I think I am finally <laughs> here. I got it working on the desktop. Oh, oh, good. Hey, Josh, we've been stalling. You know why? Why is that? Because we wanted to talk about this amazing game that's on <laughs> Kickstarter today, and we wanted you yeah. involved. Okay, it's, I'm here. It's called yeah, you're, you're here for the main event. Everything else was just... Whew. It was all the appetizers. We did all the appetizers, but now we're going straight to the main course. Great. Hey. Fantastic first day yeah. for uh, Burnt Island Games. Daryl Chow and Josh Capel, 
in too deep. It funded already. Uh, I've got some pictures and we can show them. I got them right off of the Kickstarter. But if one of you could give give the chat crew an elevator pitch, what is in too deep? Uh, I guess I'll do it because Daryl's been talking for a half hour. He's running out of voice. <laughs> yeah. All right. So in, in too deep, um, it's set in the future and uh, sort of civilization has collapsed down to a bunch of disassociated city states. And uh, an evil organization called the Syndicate tries to infiltrate and gain control of those places by um cybernetically enhancing the criminals in those cities and then using them to take over the city now we work for an agency that's dedicated to bringing down the syndicate and what we've discovered is that we can hack into the cybernetics of those criminals and control them so via the criminals uh cybernetic upgrades we can have some degree of agency over what they're doing and we start the game uh, being able to control them very little but as the game goes on and you become more familiar with individual criminals you start to get more and more and more adept at controlling them and you can sort of push them farther influence them more gain access to their special skills and so on now the whole uh point of doing that is you're trying to prevent the syndicate from launching its final plot you're trying to you're trying to foil their plot and the cool thing is, as you are engaging in crimes, sort of uh, participating in having the criminals commit crimes so that you can gather evidence and intel towards foiling the plot, it's bothering you um, morally. You're picking up dilemmas uh, as you do that and varying degrees of corruption. So the more effective you are during the game, the more risk of corruption you're bringing on towards yourself. And at the end of the game, the player that is the most corrupt is gonna lose a whole bunch of points, but only if the plot has been foiled. So that sets up a very cool tension between all the players where one of us is going to be in too deep at the end of the game and is not going to want the plot to be foiled. But the amount of corruption we have is from each other so you're never exactly sure if you're the one that has gone in too deep or if someone else is and so on so you can see sort of how many cards worth of corruption other players have but you can't see the values on them so there's a little bit of guesswork as far as who which of us has is going to be the one that goes in too deep and there's a lot of fun second guessing about which evidence you want to put towards foiling the plot and how corrupt you're willing to be when you're when you're uh committing these crimes it's really can, cool. can you map it out josh or is everything pretty hidden um the values on the corruption card on the dilemma cards range from zero to six as far as the, wow. the corruption goes so you can get a vague sense of where people are if you want to average it out at three points a card right you can sort of guess about how corrupt other players are and there's ways to sort of raise or lower your corruption as you go but it's it's hard to know exactly how corrupt anyone is you only know how corrupt you are over the course of the game and that's going to influence uh how you behave during the game Every do, we, time. do we see any natural alliances forming that get broken, things like that? Or is that not really an element that comes out? Um, alliances aren't exactly the way that I would describe it. You definitely sometimes get in a situation where there's someone who is far, clearly far out ahead of the other players as far as corruption goes. And then, <laughs> and then everyone seems to try to... Uh, work together to foil the plot so that that player will be punished so there's a i think there's, a, there's, there's also like changing incentives in a game so sometimes okay. you may want to work together um one chapter um and sometimes you, you want you want to go against it so i think that's kind of uh, what makes the game dy dynamic like <clears throat> you depending on um how the game sets up yeah yeah, and the cool thing is that this aspect of it, the corruption and the going into deep aspect of it, is kind of even external to the actual gameplay of, of what you're doing in the game. Um, the meat of the game, the real gameplay of the game, is the central board, New Dawn City, is what the is what the board is called, and all of us are trying to influence the same pieces on the board. So I mentioned before that you hack into the minds of these criminals. Well, any of us could be hacking into any of those criminals on our turn. So. I'm trying to move around the same pieces and, and adjust the same environment to to um, complete the criteria of the crimes I'm working on, whereas you are also doing the same thing and also influencing the same stuff around the board. So you're trying to sort of solve these puzzles by manipulating the same pieces that other people are manipulating at the same time, trying to get things in place 
for the crimes to be uh, able to be committed. Uh, that, that sounds pretty interactive. So there, there's some interaction between the players as we move around the board? Oh, absolutely. There is interaction. Um, oftentimes, we'll, you'll be sort of putting your foot into the door of other, of other players and uh, sort of getting in the way of what they're doing more often by accident than uh, deliberately. But we have built into the game a very deep and rich toolkit where players can sort of creatively think their way out of almost any situation. So, Daryl, the you know the, the 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 notes that I read about it talk about New Dawn City. There's a lot of thematic elements in the in the instructions in the Kickstarter and the talk. Where where did this where did this part come from? Where did the, all the backstory come from? Um, I think uh, I mean for me, I, I really love the puzzle aspect, but um, I think um, I think the cool thing that we were that we were able to do from this game is actually make the mechanics really part of the the theme itself. Mm -hmm. um, so, so what I mean is that um, it's almost a game where we wanted we like uh, <clears throat> there's the feeling that we wanted the players to experience, and then we kind of built the mechanics to make the players feel that experience, <clears throat> and then yeah. like that that they just naturally kind of build its own theme around it. Um, the, the, the concept of uh, being able to control the different characters, that kind of lent itself to this uh, futuristic theme. Yeah. Of, yeah. And then basically, um, I think what was really nice about this project is that everything feeds into each other really well. And you can see that <clears throat> as you play it, it's quite a seamless, um, like the theme and the mechanics. Um, <clears throat> and the story um, is it, it's all interlinked. So, Josh, how far back does the collaboration go between you and Daryl on this game? Because you, you both listed as co-designers, right? Yes. Um, the the very very initial proposal for for the game was mine from twelve years ago or something. Really, a really, oh, wow. a really long time ago. I entered so sort of a an outline for what is the the puzzle aspect of the game. Uh, into into a contest and um, showed it to Daryl at a game design meetup that we that we both went to, and he really liked, really, really liked it, and had a bunch of great yeah, ideas. Yeah, I still really like it. Yeah, like he told me, like he really was, like, he couldn't yeah. sleep because he was thinking about the he's thinking about some of the ideas in the game. So I was like, let's work on this game together. So we started digging into it, and it was yeah, only we need like six, six years to play this game. Uh, still waiting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we uh we worked for a long time on getting the the puzzle aspect into place and it was only much later that the sort of espionage and um mind hacking theme came into it we for a while you had sort of your own characters on the board and you, you kind of uh had agency over characters but when we made the step to have none of the pawns on the board actually be owned by any players, but rather you can jump into those uh, shoes uh, freely. That's what sort of I made the theme come about. Uh, that was the, the hook that really drove it forward. Yeah, right? once once we once we decided that we wanted that to happen, the the science fiction theme of having a, a way for that to happen sort of suggested itself to us, and then everything really started to click and form into place. Is that what these six represent? That's the six people you can kind of jack into? Those are the six criminals that started the game. We were, we're, we've now revealed a seventh, and there might be more on the campaign. Oh, no. I may have some pictures of that in just a second. So, yeah. Daryl, I can't think of a theme that is as far away from Remember Our Trip than this game. Is, I got is one. That a Plantopia. Yeah, or Plantopia, exactly. <laughs> A life of a potato, remembering our trip, and jacking in neurally to for a cross. Oh, this one, or, or coffee. Yeah, Daryl, how do you do it? I mean, how, is it a challenge for you to have all these different levels of thematic interaction? Yeah, I think. I mean, for each, of course, um, of course, each project is its own thing. So, like uh, every time I I go in, I, I I'm kind of jacked in, just like the just like the characters in, in into deep, <clears throat> um, but. I really like. I mean, for each game, I because I mean, a, a lot of designers they always say like, you know, I design mechanics first or I design theme first. Sure. <clears throat> for me, it's kind of like a bootstrap thing. Um, the theme will inform the mechanics, and then the mechanics will inform the theme. <clears throat> um, 
otherwise you're going to either end up with a, like a really abstract game <clears throat> or a game that is kind of like really well illustrated but has like no soul um so to me uh no, no matter what the theme and of course i you know i i, I love uh, i love collaborations i, I love <clears throat> uh, different themes uh, i like to kind of challenge myself with a lot of different mechanics yeah. um but for each yeah. each game yeah I was gonna say for Into Deep, Daryl and I had long, long conversations about like uh, to what he's talking about here is we're trying to drill down into what what's the what do we want players to feel when they're playing this game? What do we want them to experience? What do we want them to agonize over? Right. What, do, what do we want them to um, how do we want them to view other players in the game? And then how can we craft a system that's gonna create the playground for those emotions and experiences to 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 happen in in a way that's logical and, and makes sense and, and we tried a whole lot of different things before landing on this system that really smoothly and elegantly creates well, that helena said she's got the answer for how he can do all these different themes it's because he's just a really amazing game designer it's just it's just that simple <laughs> i mean Steve there, there may be a conflict of interest there but <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> but yeah thanks thanks helena for the support. And that's Elena, of course, from Burn Island Games. Mm -hmm. So, and thank you, thank you, Elena, for uh, setting all this up for us. I really appreciate it. Steve says, "Have you guys thought of another idea? Hacking into a corrupt potato to corner the black coffee black market? Yeah, that's the next expansion. game. We actually already did think of that. <laughs> I'm seeing expansion poss possibilities. Hey, thinking about the Kickstarter. Yeah, we've got the modular boards that you're going to see in the Kickstarter page, but there's also some exclusives that I thought we might want to mm -hmm. talk about, Josh." Okay, sure. Tell us about the uh, criminal miniatures. Okay, um, in the retail version of the game, you'll get uh, very nicely illustrated, beautiful art standees for, for the criminals, but for the deluxe edition, you're gonna get these awesome miniatures that were modeled by uh, Francesco Oru for us. He's a really good uh, minis modeler. If anyone's looking for someone who can do fantastic uh, work with very uh, minimal uh, direction. Um, so these miniatures are just going to sort of help your game come to life and help you uh, immerse yourself into um, feeling what these criminals are capable of while they're uh, in action around the board. And all of them are these sort of uh, nefarious figures that have different powers and abilities you can access during the game. Yep, and take a look at this one. So it looks like uh, you, there's, they've, they've added one more, the ghost, a new criminal that would come out already. Is that right? Yeah, she's. Uh, we haven't hit that stretch goal yet, but we've revealed it now. So um, that one is up next, uh, uh, the next stretch goal that we hit. And uh, the ghost is a really good one because in, in the game, there are blockades that prevent you from moving from zone to zone. And she can just ignore them, fly right through them because she has sort of stealth technology. And also a lot of the crime criteria when you're trying to complete something during the game requires you to have a criminal that's alone in a district for a burglary or a kidnapping or something like that. But she, yeah. she's always considered to be alone no matter who else is in the district because of- Daryl, take a look at that miniature, crime. man. It, look at the kinetic energy that you see from her. I mean, go, Ghost almost looks like she's in the middle of a run. Doesn't she look like, but where- She's kind of fading out, but almost in the middle of a run. I like that. Yeah, yeah I, I think the, the the sprinter has a similar kind of feel. And <clears throat> yeah, I mean, um, the miniatures are just awesome. Like, <clears throat> I, I've, I've, never, I've never actually played with the miniatures myself. So I'm so excited to be able to actually play, you know, have a copy that has these miniatures. <clears throat> and what is, the, what is the Sentinel that we're looking at? Oh, yeah, let me take a look at that. Show that again there, Josh. This is a very roughly 3D printed one. So this is the size. This is with the ultimate size of them. This is just wow. a, a sample that was made. This is the smuggler. Nice. He's very good at getting his hands on items, whatever, whatever you need during the game. He can, uh, nice. he, he can get it for you. So what is the Sentinel? What, what, what's the uh, gameplay aspect for this? Daryl? Okay, so um, the Sentinel is kind of the... Thematically, it's the enforcer. So, like, and and, and all of the the people that you're con controlling are, are criminals. <clears throat> so most of the time, you don't want a sentinel in a place um, that you are, but sometimes you do, <clears throat> and so that kind of creates kind of like a push pull thing, and you, you kind of have a added kind of uh, brain power to to integrate um, your plans. <clears throat> um, how? Where should a sentinel be at any given point of the game? Yeah, um, yeah. Where, where do I want it to, to be in future? Where do I want it now? Yeah. And then it's, players uh, need need to control the sentinel back and forth, and that yeah. that, that gives interaction. 
I was going to say the Sentinel is is part of the local police force. We're not okay. like we're we're not we're not the police. We're doing stuff that is oh, separate sure. separate from the local police forces. So the Sentinel is sort of a representative of the the actual police force in the city. And there's other elements of the police. And sometimes they're they're going to get in your way, and sometimes you'll be able to manipulate them to your advantage. One of the Sentinel's great benefits is if you can get your hands on being able to control it you can walk it around the city and it can escort criminals around yep. even even ones that you don't that you aren't currently hooked into so it's a good way that's one of the tools in the toolkit where you can get around your normal limitations and get and move some things around the city even through those pesky blockades that most criminals can can't go through so the sentinel is a very valuable tool and also sometimes a pain in your butt when you're trying to accomplish something <laughs> in the wrong place big first day in too deep yeah. Um, Burn Island Games already funded. And Josh, you're hinting at some little things that are gonna be we're gonna be seeing in the future. Yeah, we have some timed reveals that are set up. So um at three points during the campaign, we're going to be revealing some added content for the game. Um these are not stretch goals, this is just stuff that we wanted to sort of build a level of excitement for and 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 reveal a little a little bit at time for everyone. And then we also have stretch goals in addition to that, stuff that uh we're going to reveal ahead of the of uh when when we hit those goals. And um I mean, already you see that we're, we're adding one criminal and I mean, the cat's out of the bag. They're, they're going to be more than one criminal. So uh, we, we'll be meeting some new uh, underlings as we go on. Neat, and that is In Too Deep, yeah. out from Burn Island Games, designed by Josh Capel and Daryl Chow. It's out on Kickstarter right now, big first day. Go check that out. There's some stretch goals that are gonna be met and Josh is hitting at some other big things. We want we want yeah. to see what's gonna happen with that. Hey. Daryl and Josh, this is a board game show, right? Yes, it is. You, you know what that means on a board game show. We got to play a board game. What? We got to play a board game. But so I... let me bring in Steve, who's going to give us a real... Let's see if I, if I can get you in there. All right, Steve, did you come in? Steve, I don't have your video, unfortunately. So, Oh, wait, oh. I got it now. All right, here we go. Hey. There we go, Steve. All right, so hey, Steve... Steve is going to uh, give us the quick rundown on the Ombi game. Well, I have to ask you before we get started, did you guys decide to do to do one game together or one game each? Ooh. Together. Mm, one game, yeah, together. We're one good. game together. So you're on the same page. All right, yeah. interesting. We're going to do the Ombi game. BJ would call this the, uh, the uh, they're trying to figure out whether there's a game that you have the hankering to play or you're jonesing to play. Um, what do they say in Canada? Do y'all say Ombi? No. No, mm, nobody I'm, says Envy other than other than down in, in Acadiana. I what guarantee is, they say it in Montreal, I bet. They Go probably ahead. say it in Acadia. Yeah, see? Yeah. yeah. I think so it's more like that. a, a Monjou Preferly, something like that. No, okay. Uh -huh. Something that you're dying to play. So you guys are on the same page with one. You have one in mind. Don't tell us. Okay. BJ and I are going to try to ask some questions along with the chat crew trying to figure out what game you have in mind. And it'll be a, a, a race to see who gets it um, either – we, BJ and I figure it out. The chat crew figures it out. Or you all stump us. Okay. Ready and to they roll? have one game between them, Steve? It uh, sounds like they're together yes. on one game, guys. You, yes? Yeah. Yep. All right. Wow. Okay. One game. I don't know if we've done this. We're going to have to. This, this is going to be different. Like It'll it. be interesting to see. Should we, I mean, should, no, I love should, it. should we no, separate? No. No. I love right. this. Okay. No. All right. It makes it even tougher here. Okay. So um, I'm going to start out with the first question that I always ask, if mm -hmm. you don't mind, Steve. Sure. Is it a competitive or a cooperative game? And I'm going to guess it's competitive. <laughs> I think it's competitive. It is a competitive game. Yep. No? Okay, competitive. Steve? Has it been released in the last five years or so? Um, Do you mean no. was it first released in the, in the last five years or so? Oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, I'm not, I'm not trying to be tricky. No, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not trying to, to parse it. I think anything. it's a hint. Yeah, I'm just... Uh, are you asking if it was released in the last five years or if it was available in the last five years? Released was my question initially. No, it's older than that. It's older than yeah, five before years. That. Okay. Well, Nick, it's not the mine. Sorry about that. And we <laughs> were asking for we were asking for games, not activity. So I don't know. Oh, oh, fighting words for some controversy. Something. Controversy. All right. uh, Jay wants to know: Does it play more than four? Good question. It does. It does. Yeah. Does it? <laughs> Kevin wants to know if it involves marmots. That's a four-player game. That's a Kevin. very specific question. <laughs> it's not marmots, and it's more than that's a four-player game. I think, right? It plays only four players. That one. I think so. There are right. there are no marmots. 
Zero. No more Zero. Game. The Marmot which, which game actually involves Marmots? I, I, I think I it's um, Spring Spring Meadow. Is that the one with the Marmots? Spring Meadow. Not Indian Summer is the one after that. Yeah. Mm. That's one of the Uwe Rosenberg games. Okay, right, right, so right. the only game I know that has Marmots in it. Yeah. I, I can't think of one. Uh, so here's a quick here's a question. Does it is it would you consider it board based or card based or some kind of hybrid between the two? Uh board. For me. Board based. Board based. Right, there, Jack are crew, we, there are cards, but there are cards, chat crew. It's a competitive game. It's older than five years. It's got a board, but it also has cards to it. So that narrows down to about ninety thousand games. Yeah, 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 yeah you're really. So, are there yeah. dice as well? Winnowing. Are there dice? Yeah. I don't believe so. No. No dice. <clears throat> no dice, boys. No dice. Cards older than five. Um, Does it take? Um, Oh, so Verla's got a question. She says, has it won an award? Is it an award-winning game? You know, Spiel des Jahres, maybe board game gumbo. What are we talking about here? <laughs> it has it has won some awards. I wouldn't, not the Spiel des Jahres, but. It, yeah. Okay. Jay, is are there, there are other people? Yes. You would say yes, there are meeples? Uh, yes. Yes. Uh... Yeah, I'm pretty sure there are, but I'm not sure if they're used in the traditional sense. Has Daryl <laughs> played this game? Yeah, yeah, we we played it together. I think. <laughs> Don't ignore him, Daryl. BJ's just stirring the pot. All right, Nick says ah, I've got to argue the meeples. I have to argue the meeples. There okay. are oh. there are wooden player pieces. <laughs> okay, okay, <laughs> okay. Player pieces. I wouldn't define it's, them as meeples. I think Nick, I, it's not. It's yeah. not gonna be Twilight Struggle though, because that's a two-player game. So right, it's more than four players, and it. Daryl says it has meeples, and Josh says it has therapy. <laughs> well, let's yeah. talk about the meeple. <laughs> what is a meeple? Do you count sheeples and jeeples and all those other things or not? I mean, okay, so in a game, is a meeple necessarily like a, a, a player pawn? Is it something that represents a, like a, your agency in the game? It's, it's, would, it's, would, it's, would, a, would a resource token that's yeah. shaped like something be a meeple? Like if something was a uh, a coin made of wood, would that be a, a meeple? Because or the fruit, the fruits in Finca, they're not meeples, but... right? Are those are those meeples? Yeah. I think it has to represent the people, whether they're inanimate or not, in the game. If they do that, I consider it a meeple. So and it, you can and it would have to be shaped to be to be shaped like the the person or character that's being represented. Right, like a sheeple would be would still be a meeple, Isn't but it, it looks like. What right. a rabbit hole we've gone down here. All yeah. right. <laughs> hey, no, so Verla wants to know, are there animeeples in the game? Uh, no. 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 Okay. There are no animals. No. Kevin I'm... wants to know if it was designed by Freedom and Freeze. He's got some very specific questions. Uh, no. <laughs> no. What is Hail Mary here? Yeah. Is this, is <laughs> this that, a... That question was really easy. Okay. Does it Ver 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 Oh. Oh, no. let's drill down the theme. Does it, it have a fantasy theme? theme? Fantasy theme? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm getting close. Okay. Okay. Fantasy, uh, let's recap. Fantasy theme, competitive. It's got a board. A little bit of cards. Right. Has won awards. Has won. Oh. Has me oh, oh. meeple-ish things. See, I'm thinking Shadows of Camelot, but 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 he that There's would not even be cool for meeples, and that's cooperative. Co well, yeah. is it cooperative? Yeah. Is it, is it cooperative? Uh, it's not space. Uh, I mean, this one doesn't even have a co-op element like in, into deep. Okay, uh, so it's it's it's, it's a straight competitive. strictly competitive. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Is this no a, dice in it. is this a heavy hitter game like a two hour plus game? Oh. Yes, it's if about two and a half hours. If you're two playing and a half with me, hours. yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. Um, you think two and, and a half hours? hours? That's a, that's not that's that's we also have an awful lot of people here who are gateway filler folks who are wondering is it a short game is it a family game and if they get over if we get if the breaking point is two two and a half hours to start thinking that it's deeper somewhat heavier it's on the longer side but it's not oh, like it's, it's not like a super heavyweight or anything nick says he's got it is it by martin wallace it no. is not <laughs> <laughs> sorry nick nice okay. to josh it's not by martin wallace it's based on a, it's based on a, uh, an ip right no. Uh, no. Oh <clears throat> no! God, I was thinking. I was thinking uh, Game of Thrones, but no, not Game of Thrones. Okay. Six people, longer game, fantasy, right. totally competitive. Right. Uh, a fight with Josh as to whether they're meeples or not because they're not meeples. 
I there are definitely not people in that game. I do like the idea of asking about like designer. Is it by a designer that most people would recognize the name of? Ooh, Ooh. I think gamers <laughs> would. Gamers would. Yeah. Okay. I, I can give you a bit more of a hint. Like, I mean, if you know, if you know Josh's and I's background, you can probably have a better guess. We can probably sniff it out if we have have more insight yeah. on you. If we could yeah. just hack into you. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and figure things out. Hmm. Is it uh, so? It's not. So Did we ask about it... European versus American designer? No, you no, didn't. We I don't think we no. did. Is it a European designer? No, it's not. It's American designer. Uh, no. Ooh. <laughs> that, I mean, Ooh, that kind of ties into what I just said. <laughs> interesting. Uh, knowing where we're talking, are we talking about an Asian designer? No. 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 Okay. Well, in a manner of speaking. <laughs> Maybe that was an Eric Lang game. No. No. It's not a Canadian designer either. Is it? Uh, or yeah. is it a Canadian oh, wait, it is. It is, it is a Canadian It designer. is a Canadian designer. Mm -mm -mm. Are there any plastic figures at all? No. Uh, does it have deck or bag building? No. no. All right. So, chat crew, we got a Canadian designer. That we'd, rec game. that we'd recognize. We, gamers would recognize it. Board-based with cards. It's older than five years. Won some awards. So we're talking, the, it's got some BGG. Mm, 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 mm. Two and a half hours. I mean, hours if you know any designers besides Eric Lang from Canada, you probably would know these, these designs. For, but it, his game is a four-player game, and it's nothing like what y'all are describing. Man, it's an in, I'm trying to remember who designed Endeavor. Dang it. It was Jared Gray and Carl DeVisser. They're from New Zealand. <laughs> yeah, Jay says he is stumped on it. Oh, uh, let's see. Is it still in print? Good question. That's uh -huh. a good question. <clears throat> it, it's 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 definitely much harder to get now. Yeah, I think a, a reprint is due. Helena knows. Well, Helena, How did she, really? She, knows. she says she knows. Hey, take a guess, Helena. You can beat us. Here's your chance if you think you know. Yeah, yeah. I don't think we told Helena. So we, she, we did not. So oh, we did not. That would be amazing. Oh, yeah. We want to hear your guess, Helena, so give what, it out there. Is there guess? money in the game? Is there any money in the game? Yeah. Yeah. Coins in the game, chat crew. So we got coins. We're not talking about plastic figures. We're not talking about decking or bag building. We got a board. Mm. Older than five years. And Lots fantasy. Of I think fantasy should be helping us more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's got cards though with the board. It's a fantasy. The board is game. a very key part of the game. Big, big board? Big board? Uh, yeah, pretty. Uh, it's, unique it's a modular. Shape? Yes. Yeah. Unique shape. Yeah, the shape, yes. is, shape, the is, shape is very unique. <clears throat> the shape of the board is very unique and it's modular. modular. Wow, we're just volunteering information there? Yeah. <laughs> apparently, we, apparently, we need it. Hey, it's tomorrow over there. I mean, pretty soon it's going to be Thursday if we don't get this game right. <laughs> okay, Helena, Helena's backtracking. Oh, she says, well, what's your guess? Helena, you're killing us. Give us your guess. We, we, we're happy if you win. They're, they're trying to lead us, BJ. They're, they're telling us the board is a big deal. The board is modular and a distinctive shape. I mean, it was pretty inno innovative for its time also. She oh, says Belfort. So? Oh. Belfort is correct. She got it. Belfort's oh, got, got it. it. She got it. <laughs> Wow, Helena, Helena, <laughs> great work! <laughs> I always, I always forget about Belfort. I never think yeah. about the mod tiles in Belfort. Man, yeah. I mean that, yeah. that's why we're here. So, Daryl, oh, give us a quick tip. Yeah. Why do you like Why do you like Belfort so much? Um, I think it, it came out at a time when I was really like, you know, like a budding game designer. I was very impressionable, and then uh, these are actually like, but like designed by my mentors in the game artisans of Canada. So, Great <clears throat> um, game. Uh, I, I mean, Josh has an obvious link with it. Like he drew everything in there. Yeah. Oh, that's, I did all, yeah. all that. The, ba the bamboozle yeah. brothers. Yeah. Oh, but there's yeah. the link. There's the link. Yep. Yeah. Love those guys. So, yep. That's Jake Cormier and Sin Meeples. Ring, right? Nah. Uh, Barrel, I got to call it shenanigans. That's no, no, no. Um, I was thinking of the, of the, of the, of the, the gnome ones. The gnomes I'm, are like little, uh, yeah, 
pentagons with stickers on them. I don't think that counts as a meeple. Oh, okay. Not meeples. But, eh, the, I need to see what the sticker. The stickers, if they're representing people. <laughs> okay. I agree with Josh. It's got. It doesn't have to have the exact meeple shape, but it's got to be meepleized. Yeah, that's a that's a pentagon. Right. Okay, yeah. fine. That's just like a pawn. And then there's some resource tokens that are kind of shaped like what they're supposed to be. There's like sticks of wood and blocks of stone and stuff, but they're not uh, meeples. They're, re right. they're, re they're resources. To be fair, the reason we didn't get it was uh, was not because we were misled by meeples. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> the reason no, we didn't get it is that we're not that good. True. That's true, but I'm glad that we drilled down into what makes a meeple. Josh, we're because, on the same because team. to me, it's, it's a worker placement game, right? And worker placement game, and like you're, you're kind of using these these pawns. Thank you, Verla. Okay, yep. fine. Oh, look, Daryl, it's rolling in. Daryl, it's going downhill <laughs> for you now. All it's fine. You, do you, you want Plantopi to stay up on Kickstarter? You better you know, change things around here. These are meeples, damn it. Okay, okay. They, they are not. <laughs> He's saying they're not meeples. Check. Not calm meeples. down. Everybody, calm down. Don't not don't meeples. cancel your pledges. We're all good, man. They're not meeples. Yeah. But I love Belfort. Belfort. Great game. <laughs> Belfort, yeah. What was, it, what was it that sells you about it, Josh? We were hearing what Daryl was was uh, was drawn to in it. What was it that that really made it for you? For me, it's just a very very satisfying blend of mechanisms. Like when mm. Daryl said that he thought that it was innovative, I was surprised because I don't view it as like uh, there's some Back very good ideas. There's some yeah, well true, and there are some very good ideas as far as how things interlock in the game, but. Mm. There's nothing that I would like be able to pick out and say, hey, this is like the standout, interesting, and unique mechanism of the game. I think it does a lot of cool things and smashes them together, like area control and worker placement, sort of pushing those together in an interesting way. But uh, that's that, that's where the appeal is for me, is that it really bl does blend familiar things together in a very satisfying way. Hmm. To meeple or not to meeple? Hmm. That is tonight's question. Patrick, that is excellent done. And that is the all game presented by our friends at Game Toppers LLC. Don't forget Josh and Daryl. Make your game night a showstopper when you play on a game. Uh, what did Helena win? She won the chance mm -hmm. to look at GameToppersLLC.com uh -huh. uh -huh. and check out a beautiful Game Topper that she could purchase at any time. So, Very nice. Bragging, bragging rights over beating us is not, well, much of a prize. That's true. That is not a yeah. surprise. You know what? A pat on the back and a hearty handshake sometime in 2022. Elbow bump or something. No, no that'd be now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, Fair enough. Yeah, that, and that's the Envy game that they played. So, hey, quick uh, quick pitch one more time. We've got In Too Deep. It's out on Kickstarter right now. People want to check it out. Uh, how many days would love to check it out? Uh, 22 days to go. And I'm happy to announce that In Too Deep just managed to beat out um, our last Kickstarter campaign uh, yeah. in all the Mountain Kings. It just beat just beat its first day total, just surpassed it. So that's a great milestone for uh, this bounce. campaign. Gumbo Steve, bounce. so the last Kickstarter was in the Hall of the Mountain King. Yep. Of course, Jay Cormier and Sinfin yep. Link. Well, we should have been thinking about for it right off the yeah, bat. Yeah, those guys. Yeah. Yeah. Errol, we didn't do our homework. That's what that's the problem. I didn't I didn't mm -hmm. I didn't get deep enough into the homework. All right. So that's that's the Envy game. All right, board gamers. That's it for another episode of Gumball Live. Steve, I'm gonna send you down to the green room if you don't mind. Thanks for coming on, guys. How Thanks, can sense. they reach Our how pleasure. can they reach you, Daryl and Josh, if they have any questions about the game? Oh, the best place to ask questions about the game is on in the comment section of the campaign of the campaign page itself. After they click, right? Yeah, exactly. So yeah. Once, once you've pledged and you just like you just like close your eyes and, and back the game. That's all you have all to do. Right. Then oh, that, will, that will give you access to the question and answer process. That's exactly. No, I'm kidding. So you, they, uh, if they want to get you on Twitter, um, they, I tweet not a whole lot. They can't really find me. I can't be found. I'm I'm unfindable. <laughs> no, nobody find me. Just, um, as for me, um, like yeah, if you follow origame.co, I handle most of those accounts. So okay, and ask me questions. Yeah. and of course Josh, they can just send an email to. Uh, to game designer at no that probably will they'll be able to find you somehow yeah you know what back to game and you can have all access to josh and daryl all yeah. you want with exactly. any questions all right board gamers that's it for another episode of gumbo live make sure to like our facebook page facebook.com slash board game gumbo or our youtube page because it helps us get the word out about all of our upcoming shows including next week the man the myth the legend philip millman 
the <gasps> baseball highlights 2045 two-time champion i promised to give him his own show i've been stalling it for as long as i can sometimes you write a check that you have to cash yeah you just have to cash josh so philip's going to be here next week we're going to be talking about baseball highlights 2045 one of my favorite deck builders really my favorite deck builder one of my favorite games of all times i am bj from more game gumbo and until next time daryl and josh laissez le bon temps roulette and same to you same